Today is August 24th, 2010. I hit level 25 today. Ding! And this is five things. It's my birthday! It's my birthday! It's my birthday! It's my birthday! But first, you guys are in trouble. In each episode, I've been pop- Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. In each episode, I've been popping up this little annotation that says to like me or share me or whatever, and you guys have been pretty good about doing that on Facebook. And while I like Facebook, the real place that I'm trying to get famous is not on Facebook, but on YouTube. I use the term famous loosely. All that I ask you, my fans, to do is to watch the video on the YouTube page. Navigate down there, now you can, okay, there you go. Click the thumbs up down there. The most likes that any of my videos have is five. I could probably guess who those five people are. So do your part to help me out and you'll make me really happy. It's my birthday! Some pretty cool people have been born on August 24th. We got this guy, he's funny. This guy's pretty funny too. This kid bought an ice cream truck with his earnings from Harry Potter. And my favorite nerd fighter. But the coolest and scariest thing that has happened on August 24th is this. I think my editor mixed up his Vesuviuses. But anyway, on this date in the year 79 AD, Mount Vesuvius blew its top and killed everyone in the city of Pompeii. Well, maybe not everyone, but a lot of people. Before the magma and lava or whatever, one is inside the caldera and one is outside. I, I'm, I'm not a scientist. Before the fire could kill everyone, the air rose to the temperature of 250 degrees Celsius. Google tells me this is 482 degrees Fahrenheit. Anyone who was inside that cloud died instantly. I'm only gonna apologize once for the flickering light. It's, uh, it's a sunny, cloudy day. It can't make up its mind, so it changes every second. Number two, and it's the first time I've ever talked about it, is um, something on Facebook. Users of smartphones are everywhere, especially in big cities. Now the behemoth of social media is seeking to connect them without them having to take their eyes off the screen. Facebook is taking the wraps off Facebook Places, a service that lets users broadcast their location to friends. So if you're in the park, you might find out who among your Facebook friends is already there. It's not a new idea. Foursquare Labs has been doing this for years, but it's tiny in comparison with the half billion users of Facebook. I tried Foursquare for a couple months, but the novelty wore off very fast. It became obvious very quickly that Foursquare was not a tool for you. It was a tool for the businesses that you were frequenting. Such and such pub would offer you a free appetizer on your 10th check-in or whatever. It's a way to get you to come to a place more often. It's like having a, a, a customer card that you swipe for a discount every time you come. That's what it is. Since Facebook is all about generating revenue, I'm sure that this is exactly the way that they're going to use places. So that's Foursquare and places without talking about privacy. If you want to talk about privacy, go to Google and type in Foursquare robbery. You will see all kinds of stories about Foursquare got my house robbed because people knew I was out or whatever. It's probably not always a good idea to tell everyone where you are or aren't. If you want to use places, be my guest, try it out. I, I'm, I'm probably not going to use it at all. But one thing I would recommend you doing is this. On your Facebook page, go to your privacy settings. Yes, that is, I can has cheeseburger bookmarked. Then go to customize settings and under things others share, make sure that friends can check me into places is disabled. If friends can check me into places is enabled, that means someone can see you out somewhere and be like, hey, I see Sean's here and check me in there. Even if I don't want them to. That's annoying. My favorite video game website is GameSpot. Not to be confused with GameStop, which is a video game store. Last year they ran a contest for the greatest... Hang, you're very cute. I know, you're getting hair all over my new shirt. Sorry. Anyway, GameSpot last year did this greatest game hero of all time contest. And it came down to the two that I had in my final bracket, and I actually did pick the correct winner, although before that my bracket was all messed up. It came down to Mario and Gordon Freeman. Gordon Freeman, of course, being the hero from Half-Life. What's kind of funny about the final matchup of those two is they're both silent video game heroes. They never speak except maybe in grunts or winces when they get hurt. Also, sometimes Mario says Mamma Mia. But this year, GameSpot is doing an all-time greatest game villain contest, which is really cool. The only problem is I don't know at least half of the villains. But I did fill out my bracket. It's gigantic. I can't believe how many people they put in it. 
And the only omission that I can find is strange considering last year's winner, the G-Man from Half-Life is not there. The head of the Combine from Half-Life 2 is there, Dr. Breen, and so is Gladys, who is the bad robot from Portal. Maybe it's because of the way it turned out last year, but I decided to end up with Bowser and Gladys. A little bit of Valve and a little bit of Nintendo. And my final winner, Gladys. Come on. So head over to GameSpot if you don't already have an account, just sign up with your email address or you can just sign in with Facebook and create a bracket and we'll go head to head. Before I forget, Portal 2 comes out on February 9, 2011. Cake is a lie. And Stephen Merchant is going to do a voice of a robot in it. Number four is this. This is an ebook. They've been around for a very long time. People at work, you can stop asking me what this is. You can stop being very surprised when you see it. They've been around a lot longer than iPods. They're just not as ubiquitous. This is my wife's, it's her Nook. It's from Barnes & Noble. Um, I want my own now because I just read The Passage by Justin Cronin on it, and it was one of the best reading experiences of my life. I really like how small this is. Point of comparison, this is a novel. This is an ebook. Do you see the difference? This is heavy and difficult to hold. This is light. I want one. The last thing this week is another YouTube user. Yet another YouTube user. Her username is Cookie4Monster4, and her name is Esther, and she's a 16 year old girl with thyroid cancer. This is an oxygen tube, and I stick it in my nostrils, which are located on your nose. Bam. Esther has been trying to blog every day in August. She hasn't quite made it, but she's been pretty close. It occurred to me while I was watching her channel that I watch a lot of dramedy on TV, but there's no dramedy that I watch on YouTube. I either watch weird things or news or comedy. I don't watch something that is alternately funny and then sad. I am not defeated yet, and that is something that I forget sometimes. But right now, I remember it. Watching Esther's channel is a little like listening to an episode of This American Life or something by Joss Whedon. You, you laugh at something that's really funny and then you remember that she's a 16 year old girl with thyroid cancer. She's gotten quite a boom of followers. Boom, boom, boom. She's got a recent flow of new visitors, including me, because John Green named her birthday Esther Day, where she gets to choose what he does every year. And she said she wants it to be about family and love. Uh, isn't it enough just to show you that I love you without having to talk about it? I'm a boy. I don't like to talk about it. Head on over to her channel, link in the doobly-doo, and check out some of her very endearing, sweet, and a little bit sad videos. That's it for five things this week. Happy birthday to me. I gotta go get in my birthday suit. Long to be thing is connected to this big machine which creates oxygen out of regular air. And that is a cool machine, and I like that machine. And I named that machine Denmark.